Okay, guys, this is Grace, Excuse or Remedy, take 41, take 2. We had an interruption. I'm starting over again. Thank you very much. All right, we're doing today, guys, the letter of Paul to the Philippians. That's right, Sharon, the Philippians. Okay, let's start chapter 1, shall we? Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus the Christ. To all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus the Christ. What is fruit of the Spirit, guys? Peace, joy, meekness, humbleness, right? Grace, the Spirit of God. Fruits by the Lord Jesus. Given through the Holy Spirit. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus the Christ. So, guys, you might be going through, you know, you might be having some tribulations. Your body might be given out. You might be ailing. But through all this, remember this. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's praying. He is making intercession for you. He is giving you peace and comfort. He is getting you through those rough days. And be confident of this very thing, my friends. That the Lord who has begun a good work in you, through His Holy Presence, the Father's Son, will complete it. That's a fact. Even as it is fit for me to thank this all of you, of you all, excuse me, because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the Gospels. Gospel, excuse me. Got a little headache today. You are all, you are all partakers of my grace. I think I was said somewhere else too. I think with Jesus, you are all partakers of my spirit. Grace, spirit, right? There's been a few times when Paul had to make a judgment call, even though he wasn't in the place he was judging. For instance, when a person was uh, uh, having intercourse with his father's wife, which in this case, I am definitely sure it was the mother-in-law, okay? Or I mean the the stepmom, excuse me. And Paul, not having been there, but heard about this situation, said, no, 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 a little leaven's going to leaven that whole lump. You got to get that out of there. And he says, I ain't there. I'm not there, but I, in spirit, am with you, and I've already made the judgment call. So let this person be put out of the fellowship that the flesh might be destroyed in that day, but he himself being saved. And later on, he said, forgive the brother lest he be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Which, remember that, guys. That is a lesson for all of us. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus the Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Even the smallest things, guys, we're called the judge. Don't you know you're going to be judging angels someday? So... If we're going to be judging angels, aren't you not worthy to judge the smallest things in the fellowship? I'll tell you what you do. Find the guy or the gal that's least esteemed in the fellowship. Let them judge. Okay? That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of the Lord. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus the Christ. Now those fruits come through the Holy Spirit, guys. You're already filled, okay? You've already been tanked up. You've already been topped off. Don't walk around like you haven't got something you, you already have received. With faith, guys, you must walk that out, okay? Unto the glory and praise of God. But I would you should understand, brothers, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are made known in all the palace and in all other places. 
You know that the apostles, in particular all of them really, but Paul speaking about there are things that have happened to them, Timothy, um, uh, just many, okay? And they were the examples of suffering affliction, guys. So if you're going through a... a my, my touch here. I have frequent headaches. And some of these can make me sick. Some of these actually require me to go get a shot sometimes. It's not that point. I get upset stomachs. I have a mesh in my stomach. I've had a couple surgeries. One of them was with a blocked bowel. My spine is terrible. It's dried out. And I, I've got arthritis throughout. I don't see too well. <laughs> you know, the guy going to India. Yeah. And I am. But part of what we're called to do, guys, might I share with you? And I know there are many. I know. I don't even have to go there on faith to know this, guys. Because the Lord said it in faith, I believe him. He says, remember, there's nothing that you yourself are going through that there are not other brothers and sisters, children of the Lord God, in the world going through those self-same things. But what are we called to do, guys? Endure afflictions? Right? Persevere! I just battled an icebox freezer to get a piece of chicken out. I used a hammer. <laughs> With a headache. Endure all things believe in all things hope in all things and love will get you through what guys come on all things we're also called to be examples okay the older fellas <laughs> are called to be examples to the younger fellas the older moms are called to be examples to the younger women okay the apostles taught us one thing, they taught us everything. Their example was Christ. Our example was them through Christ. And now your example is the old guy, okay, telling you to endure all things. Okay? Great reward at the end. The Lord keeps flashing across my mind, patience. Dave! Patience! So I'm telling you, patience. Huh? It could be worse. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, could be worse. And many of the brothers in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds. Remember Paul, prison, whipped, you name it, it happened to Paul. People that he was going to preach to, that Jesus was sending him to, didn't want to hear him. And that's no marvel. They didn't want to hear the Lord. People where I'm going, I sure hope want, I hope there's a few, you know what I mean? But those are the days, guys, we live in. Are much more bold to speak the word without fear. The examples that Paul set, as well as the apostles and the Lord Jesus himself being chief, gave others courage to endure those things. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy. No, not me. I, you know, I've learned a little, little bit in this environment. Strive, and some also of goodwill. I'd rather just preach because I like the Lord. You know what I mean? I don't know what category it falls under, but... And he saved me, so you know what I mean. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds. In other words, there are going to be those that preach Christ, but they just pretty much want to put a showboat on. You know what I mean? But the way I look at it, if they're preaching the truth about Christ, how can they uh, lightly speak anything against him? Okay. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus. We get through the narrow way because we're led by the Spirit of God. We get through the desert because we're led by the 
Spirit of God. Okay. We get through those crashing waves, guys. Because we're led by the Spirit of God. Those crashing waves being masses of people up against the boat. You're the boat. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Just to let you know something. Pastor Dave here has had, I don't know, some call it near-death experience, but I actually did. Brother, you got to tell us, did you, did you hear music? No, not really. I was a young guy, 17-ish, in the military. I think it was AIT, where you learn your job. I think that's what it was, pretty sure. Uh, dead of winter. Dead of winter. And I ran out. We ordered chicken. The barracks. And chicken truck. And we're all running out. We get our boots on. We're out ready for a chicken fest. And as I ran out the door, apparently, Pastor Dave lost his footing. And I hit the ice. Up went my body down went my head knocked myself out and all of a sudden i'm looking at everybody looking at me one not an experience now here's the thing about death experiences some call it near death no you're dead okay for a bit anyway if it's not your time guys it's not your time enemy might want to take you out but it ain't happening gotta have other plans now as i'm hovering over my body I, you know, you don't have a body. So whatever the spirit of man is in the image of the Lord God, that's what hovers over the body, at least momentito, okay? But I can tell you this. The peace was wonderful. The joy was stupendous. There was no pain. I couldn't see any arms or legs or any such thing, but I could see. And then the, the voice behind me says, no, we're going to give you another chance. You know, it wasn't my time yet. And I knew I was going to have a headache. And boom, there I was again, looking up. The reason I kind of bring this up is, guys, when it comes to that time, and it's approaching, where the FEMA camps start taking residence, Endure that 10 days, guys. I'm telling you the truth. Your body is just something that you are housed in, created in the image of God, is within, it's what, it's within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The spirit of God's within you. And you were created after the image of God. And God is what? Spirit. The only creation that God made with his hands that had the spirit breathing life into I'm not going to comment on the angels because they I don't know but I do know that man himself received the breath of life and he receives the breath of life when you meet Christ himself what's that saying that is saying we don't know what body we're going to have when we're raised up from the dead but I can guarantee you this it's not what you're wearing now. If you fall asleep in Christ our Savior, with filled with the Holy Spirit, then whatever the Lord raised up to be is what you're going to be. I'm telling you a true fact, guys. I had experienced a death experience. Heavenly voice behind me said it wasn't my time. They were giving me another chance. Boy, has the Lord been merciful to Brother Dave here. But it finally took something to wake Brother Dave up. And Dave's wide awake now. Why, eyes wide open. You know what I mean? That's why I'm telling you about it. So when that day comes, guys, that you have to give the ultimate gift to the Savior. When you're going to glorify the Father. Remember that. 
Once it's done, it's done quickly. Quickly. And let those that hear have the understanding. It'll just, you won't even know, guys. That's how quick. Sanctify the Lord in your heart. Let your last breath be honoring his name. And then, guys, oh, when it happens, you're going to see yourself floating over. Well, that was, that's kind of worn out, Lord. But guess what? Whether you go to sleep or you go with the Lord, that's his decision. But I'm here to tell you the truth. You won't miss the body you're wearing now. I believe all things work together for good. I do believe that we have experiences in life for a reason, guys. And I'm here to tell you, it really is so. When you die, you're not dead. I'll tell you why. Because the body is actually the vessel you're using in this life. This is how you try. This is how you're tested. This is the good works you do for the Father. But on that day, that you are asked to give the ultimate gift for the Son because He gave it to you. On that day when you are allowed to glorify the Son and you glorify the Father, guess what the Father said Himself? I'll glorify you because the Son is in you. And then those last words you speak to those that want to take your head off is God's calling you to, but you won't be able to say it. Because the very ones doing that to you have already lost theirs permanently. So you remember, you glorify the Lord. Sanctify Him in your heart. And once that happens, guys, it'll be so quick. The Lord will not allow you to feel much of anything. <laughs> but guess what? Right after, you're going to be looking at yourself because you're going to be in the Spirit looking at what once was the house that clothed you but will be never more then what happens is at the resurrection God's gonna clothe you with a body likened unto the angels that is sincere that is the truth it will be let's continue so again Verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I am in a strait. In other words, I'm perplexed. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm you know, in this, I, you know, what do I do? I mean, I'm kind of, you know, betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with the Lord. Which is far better. Nonetheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So moms, dads, one spouse that knows the Lord but nobody else seems to yet. If the door is open and you're asked, do you want to go now? Look at them. Because it's your testimonies that are given those seeds little by little. At the proper time, God's going to water it. What happens if the farmer leaves the crop to the crows, to the uh, raccoons? What happens? What happens if the weeds start to grow and choke the fruit before it even goes up? So you have a job, guys. Be faithful in it. The Lord's going to give you a reward at the end. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus the Christ for me by my coming to you again. Uh, you know, I, you guys might listen to me saying Jesus the Christ. Well, it's important for us to know that Jesus Christ wasn't his first and last name. Might I? What's Christ mean? Messiah. So it's Jesus, the Messiah, okay? That's just, I'm putting that out there. All right, a little something from Dave here. That's why I do that. Only let your conversation, in other words, let 
the way you live. Conversation is your manner of living, the way you conduct yourself, not just around those in the fellowships, but guys in personal life. Be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, in other words, doing what the Lord said, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I might hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in, and you guys, you need to listen to these few little verses here, okay? Very important in the modern Christian's life today. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And that's in everything, guys. Our daily walk. Having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Paul is a, one of our greatest examples, guys. You know, um, of a person who had to endure much, and he did it gladly for the sake of saving as many as he could. He did become all things to all men, so that by all means he could save some. That should be the heart of every Christian today. Don't give up in doing what is right for your neighbor. Because in due season, guys, you're going to reap. But don't give up. Remember what the Lord says. Many will fall away. Many hearts will grow cold. Many will withdraw their hand of mercy. Don't do it. You sound judgment. Okay, but always remember, if somebody's hungry or thirsty, you're there for them. If you have the means to give them gas money, give it to them. If you don't, don't. Okay? <laughs> I had to put that in there, Mom. <laughs> All right. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. I, I just like the fruit of God, don't you guys? I like holiness. I don't know. I like light. It's never light enough in this apartment for me. I like light. And Jesus is light. He exposes things that we might be having problems with. Okay. And he says, confess your faults one to another. Confess also if you're having struggles with something. And for the younger people, go to somebody established and older in the fellowships. For your, for your older people, go to the pastor if it's a problem. Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Remember, we're all baptized into one spirit, guys. We're all members one of another. You got one hand, but there's five fingers to that hand, right? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Boy, have I learned some lessons lately. Don't, be, don't ask for somebody else's portion. Be content that you have one at all. Don't be envious of somebody else's portion. Be grateful that you're even included in the house. Be content. Because there's others outside that have not yet tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Um, I have learned some things. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Be concerned. If you know, you know, sometimes guys, this is so. After I have got up here and, and I do the best I can in Christ, I really do. And if you know anything about my tapes, guys, you know I'm going to tell you if I got problems or I got faults or I have confessions to make, right? But sometimes, you know, I'll make the message, I'll sit down, I might have a splitting headache like I got now, and uh, then something comes up. Maybe a neighbor needs something. Maybe I'll hear that... Uh, somebody else is having troubles and they want you to pray for them and sometimes guys 
you are not the only one. Sometimes you get a little tired, get a little cranky. And you may not be so willing until. And then the Lord will put in your heart and says, well, Dave, you know, we're just up there. You can't preach my word and then not do it. He don't like that. That motivates me to do the right thing. And that, guys, is on account of the Holy Spirit who talks to you. And he makes intercession for you. If you're having problems, no matter what they are, guys, spiritual or carnal. If you're needing prayer, be there one for another, okay? I've had people come here. Um... I had one not too long ago come here to this very apartment. And I know, if she's not a sister, guys, she's going to be. I just felt a kinship to her, like she was related somehow to me. You know what I mean? And those that are in Christ should have that kinship. I did not know her heart was heavy until she started talking about it. Then the Lord caused me to speak on it. I don't remember what I said, but apparently is what she would need it. Okay, so we're there for each other, guys, no matter what. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He'd have been the first, guys, to welcome you. If you had a problem here, he knew it. But he would have been the first not to throw the stones at you. He would have been there saying, look, this is what you do. He'd pick you up, he'd dust you off, and said, now look, you do what I've asked you to do. And I love you, don't worry. Things will be okay. And you take his word for it. Okay? Because he is the word. The final word. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God? He made himself a little lower than the angels. Right? But made himself of no reputation. Right? And took on the form of a servant. That's why the Lord says, you want to be great? Then serve everyone. Remember the little story about the lady in the fellowship? And was made in likeness of men, yet he was God. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, and became obedient even unto death. Did he wave his arms in protest? Did he use fists to get his point across, guys? When he was hit with a club across his face? Did he resist in any way? Did you hear him crying in the streets? No. And neither are we supposed to. Do not pick up the guns. Do not purchase the knives. Do not get a baseball bat. Do not lift a hand even against your enemy. Otherwise you become your worst nightmare, guys. He is an example. Do you remember what Paul went through? Do you remember what Paul went through? Do you ever hear any stories about him lifting his hands to defend himself? Did he ever fight? Did he ever beat somebody? Did he ever hit somebody? Did he do anything to harm any living soul? And those that weren't living and persecuting those that were trying to live the right way, he just cast them out for Christ. What about the apostles, guys? Did they? Did you ever hear of anybody hitting anyone? There's only one instance when somebody took two swords or two knives that was in the garden before the Lord was arrested. And then when he was arrested, one of them, I, I just, for some reason, I keep thinking Peter, um, was going to, he took the ear off of Mal, uh, uh, Malchus, or uh, Malchus, or Malcolm, or something like that. And the Lord says, he that lives by the sword is going to die by the sword. It was for that phrase he was going to say. He put the ear back on him and healed him. 
even then, even then, guys, they arrested him because it had to be. You know, though otherwise none of us, including Brother Dave here, would be saved. Don't use weapons. Don't use force to defend you or your family. Nobody's saying, guys, jump into the lion's den, and nobody's saying jump into the fires. You remember like Nebuchadnezzar did with uh, uh, Daniel's three companions, Meshach, uh, Shadrach, and Abednego? Nobody's saying do that. There's a limited exodus going to come to this country, in the United States. There's going to come some stuff. I do believe the economy is going to crash soon. And I believe it has something to do with the wars overseas, the rumors of them. Before that happens, guys, have, have a plan. Don't use violence, don't get weapons, but have a plan. Get a pantry together, because for the first couple of months, it might be a little shaky outside. Have enough to, to supply your, your neighbor's needs, because most Americans, guys, they didn't supply anything. What they have is what they had in their cupboards before it happened. Less than 1% of the total population of this country has even a three-day supply. Pretty much what they have in their cupboards. Very few are even actually taking what I'm saying serious. Be one of the ones the Lord's touched their heart. Store up what you can. Try to get enough grain stuff to help your neighbor on your right, to help your neighbor on your left. And guys, remember, just because they don't know the Lord yet doesn't mean they're not going to meet Him because of the kindness you showed Him. Keep that in mind. Okay. And being found in fashion, this is verse 8, guys, on chapter 2. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, praise the Lord God, and things in the earth, and things under the earth. Oh. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise his name forevermore. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, here's something you need to understand and listen to my brethren. I like that word. I'm saying, you know, my brethren. For it is God which works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Much I say do all things without murmurings and disputings. Yes, you're going to wake up, uh, and might I say, on the wrong side of the bedroom. Uh, all right. Leave it in the bedroom. My wife's a little grabby with the, you know, the covers, and it was a little cool last night, might I share. And when I went to, to grab the, the blankie, my hand slipped. I did not do this on purpose. I don't like violence really I don't but she didn't hit me back so I figure everything's okay it was an accident all right then I don't like violence <coughs> I think she already knew that you know, like Buster you better not, you know what I mean that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world guys let your light shine if I could, you know, just one time feel the beacon of the Lord inside me so bright that I'm saying, ooh, <gasps> a little warm, you know what I mean? Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You know, guys, we are working the fields. Think about it. From the time you meet the Lord, you're working the fields. Everything you do, your family's beholding. <clears throat> You may not think they're paying attention, <clears throat> but they are. Every day. And your neighbors. Right? 
Yes, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort. When I know your state and know how you're doing. Remember I told you when you start learning the, the meanings of the words. When I know your state, that doesn't mean, you know, where you're dwelling. You know what I mean? For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. How, for your condition, how you're doing. Your well-being. How you feel. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus. But you know the proof of him that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Once you find that fellow, I mean, you could be in missions field, guys. I'm going to India. I'm hoping I link up with somebody that's going to be have a kinship with me that I might treat like a son or a brother. You know what I mean? It, it makes the mission. I, I do think that's why the Lord, I, one of the reasons why the Lord sent out his disciples two by two. Not only that. But you got two people filled with the Holy Spirit praying for the same thing. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Never mind moving the mountain over to the left. We can move the mountain to Pennsylvania from Connecticut. You know what I mean? Him, therefore, I hope to send presently as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Remember, if you're gonna if you're gonna be ministers ministering spiritual things, you do not have to worry. The Lord will provide those carnal things that you have need of clothing and food, housing. He will provide those things. But because he does provide those carnal things, your food, your shelter, you know, things that the body is going to need while you're ministering, it's only because you're ministering spiritual things to who you're going to, they're going to minister the carnal things to you. A workman is worthy of his hire. Okay? For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that you had heard that he had been sick. We all get sick, guys. Every word. Every word, guys. Okay. Yes, saints get sick. Some of the people that the Lord healed were definitely ill. He healed them. For indeed, he was sick near unto death. But the Lord God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. Because for the work of Christ he was near unto death, not regarding his own life, to supply your lack of service toward me. Finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the, cir for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What Paul is saying in this sentence here, we are the circumcision. Circumcision takes place in the heart. We're circumcised in the heart. That's what Paul is saying. We are not circumcised traditionally in other areas which require you by tradition to keep the law. Paul is saying you cannot earn righteousness through keeping the law. We have no confidence in the flesh. That's what he's talking about, keeping the law. Circumcision is that in the heart, in the spirit, okay? And which worship God in spirit. You're made righteous through the spirit, not through the works of the law. That's what it means, guys. And rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, or in other words, in the law. A lot, lot of stuff in that one little, little uh, verse. 
though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Now, this is the way he's saying, if anybody would have had confidence in the fact that I kept the law, this is where he goes on to say. If any other man thinks that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. And here we go. This is why, guys. And now you know it's the law. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. In other words, he kept everything, but it didn't give him what he wanted. Are we getting it, guys? Grace, ex you know, truth. Grace, excuse or remedy. Grace, spirit of truth. But what things were gained to me, those I, I counted lost for Christ. He said, everything that I'm telling you about that I've accomplished or I have earned or, or what I am or how, what family I was born in, they mean dumb. Because all that can't get me what I'm telling you now that you can get through faith, which faithful Abraham first was the recipient of. Or righteousness through faith of Christ to give you the comforter, which is the Father and Son in you, the hope of glory. Might I share? Kind of gets me going. Even with a headache. Yes, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. In other words, guys, Learn your Messiah. Learn the scriptures, guys. Listen to what he said. And really, truly, you really need to start in Genesis 1.1. Now, if you're just starting off, I understand you might want to take baby steps. Go to Peter, Timothy, John, stuff like that. But literally, you need to start Genesis 1.1 when you're acquainted with the New Testament. Because in the Old Testament, with that New Testament, it's going to make one nice buffet. Okay? Lord says, learn of me. He says, the law spoke of me. The Psalms, the prophets, they announced it, guys. Um, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. He said, everything I'm telling you now, if anybody want to boast about you know, keeping the law, what tribe they belong to, and how well they did, and keeping the spotlessness, the spotlessness of the law, I have done more. But all those things I count loss for the, for the sheer joy of knowing the Lord Jesus. Because through the Spirit, I have found what I've been looking for. And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Remember, he was spotless when he did it. But it didn't get him what he wanted. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, he's, saying, he's, he's telling us what it is he's after. He told us what it was every Jew should be after. The, but which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. We are changed from glory to glory, guys. From glory to glory. And the more we walk in Christ and the more we allow the holy presence of Christ and the Father to work within each and every one of us, we're actually not having much trouble putting Christ on because Christ is doing that for you through the Spirit. He's crucifying the very things, guys, that brought us to Him. And He's making a son or a daughter of God out of you. Being made conformable unto His death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the dead, those that have died in Christ at the resurrection, the trump blast, okay? He comes through the clouds. Those that are asleep in him first, rise up, uncorruptible, with a brand new body, guys. And the way we see him is the way you're going to be. Likened unto the angels. One of my favorite things. Not as though I had already attained... 
either we're already perfect but I follow after. I forget those things are in the past. Remember those desolations we used to talk about? Keep them back there because the enemy loves to throw them up in front of your face all the time, guys. Don't let that happen, okay? That I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Don't worry. The Lord's going to give you what he promised. Brothers, I count not myself to have apprehended, to obtained it already. But this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind me, and I reach forth unto those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God. In Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall also reveal this to you. Nonetheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing, brothers and sisters, that's my little thing, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even crying that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. I'm not going to throw a, 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 a sect, S-E-C-T, out there. But there are those, and you know. If they're not preaching this, they're not doing this, they're, not, they're, they're, they're changing this, then you know by what they do, by their fruits. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. Things who do bad stuff, or in other words, my friends, who mind earthly things. For our way of living is in heaven, our manner of living, our conversation. What we're looking for is not here. It's wherever paradise is. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus the Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned unto his glory, like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Look, in other words, he can do it. Therefore, my brothers, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Sintiki that they be of the same mind in the Lord. I also entreat you also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. Remember, if you have a need, ask the Lord for that need. And then walk away. He does answer the first time. And remember, forsake those things that are of the flesh. The deeds that are of the flesh, you all know the list. There are two books that are going to be open. There's actually books that are going to be open. There's the book of life, and they may require an extra volume for the other ones. Don't be found in those. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus and minds. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Do what the Lord says to do, and the fruit of righteousness is going to be known within you. You're going to feel the peace of God when you please the Lord God. When you're doing the right thing, the Lord gives comfort, He gives peace, He gives joy, He gives love, and He'll prosper whatever you put your hands to do, because you're doing it for Him. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's the thing, guys. If you have lots or if you have little, 
be content that you have something, okay? If you have a need, it's going to be provided, but be content anyway. If you're up here having a situation with a migraine, be content. The Lord will help you out with that too. You know what I mean? I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Not having too much that you forget where you got it from and not having too little because you always think for where it came from. You know what I mean? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, sent, uh, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit, remember the fruit, that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound and am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Believe it or not, guys, when you're doing something that is, that is from the heart for another, that's a fruit. And that is a good fruit. And it is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Think about a grape vineyard. It's a sweet smell. It's a very pretty smell, like or, or a, a floral park. That's what the Lord smells when you do well for someone else in His name. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ the Lord Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you. Chiefly they that are Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus the Christ be with you all. Amen. I do hope that we received and that we learned a few things today in this short book, The Philippians, that Paul is the author of, but ultimately we know it was the Spirit that wrote through Paul. Again, remember your neighbor, do a little stocking up with those pantries, guys, and remember both left and right, okay, those that believe and those that don't. If you have a little extra, share always with them, okay? And until next time we see each other on tape 42, I do believe, we're going to start on Colossians. Yes, we're going to do a few little short books. When Dave has a headache, Dave, you know, needs to have a pre-done thing here, it looks like. So, God bless. Have a good night. Or a good day.